Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we are going to discuss moving least square method. So, before we go into the details of moving least square based uh, response surface method, let us quickly review what we learned in response surface method itself. So, response surface using a regular polynomial, uh, say f, it has a form x that is the basis vector times a plus ef that is the error. Now, in this modeling, we start with a original limit state which may be in implicit form and then that we replace using a polynomial set. Mostly in this model, we discuss uh, algebraic polynomials and how to fit them. And algebraic polynomial also can have uh, higher order polynomials, but we only go up to quadratic terms and that forms this polynomial set and then there are some unknown coefficients that we find out and this basis of the polynomial can be linear or quadratic depending upon the choice we have. So, in the first example we have here a linear basis and the second one is quadratic basis and it is with cross terms and sometimes also we neglect cross term to make the modeling simple. Now, mostly quadratic basis gives a better approximation of the limit state and also it is helpful to evaluate the curvature and therefore, we can also uh, solve second order reliability problem using this model. Now, once we fit this, then our main task is to find out these coefficients. So, if you have a quadratic polynomial without cross term, then in this format alpha naught, alpha i and beta i, they are the unknown coefficients and obviously we have n plus n plus 1 altogether 2 n plus 1 unknown coefficients that we need to solve. And using least square technique, we can adapt this model to find out basically the unknown coefficients a. And once the unknown coefficients are obtained, then we can develop this response surface and we can easily use that to replace the original performance function. Now, in this linear least square approximation, we have weight function which is 1, but we can also have weight function wx that is also changing with uh, uh, coordinates and in that case, we get a moving uh, version of the least square technique and we call it moving least square technique. And the basic structure is all the same. You can see if you compare these two equations, if we have capital W equal to 1, that means a uniform weight at all uh, locations, then we have regular least square. So, that is how the response surface is constructed and then we also discuss this model in detail, how to actually optimize these coefficients and the derivation of this equation that we just uh, seen earlier. Now, graphically, this is the representation. So, we have a original performance function gx equal to 0 and that we replace with the rx equal to 0 and for that, we just create the support points and as I have already told you that a quadratic polynomial without cross term is having 2n plus 1 support points and that is what we create here and using the value of the limit state at these points, then we fit this dotted line which we call Rx and this R stands for the response surface. Now, once we have this Rx, then we can adopt gradient based technique or any other technique, for example, simulation based approach to solve the reliability problem. So, that is how the logic goes and we use meta model for reliability analysis. Now, the main uh, idea is to develop these support points and you should have sufficient number of support points so that we can uniquely solve this unknown coefficient beta. In this case, it is beta hat and do not get confused with the reliability index beta. This is the unknown coefficient in the response surface. Now, if we move further, there are different support point generation scheme and we also discussed that if we have exactly same number of support points as many equations we have or simultaneous equations, that means as many unknowns we have in the uh, response surface model, then uh, we have 
uh, unique solution but if you have more points then we have to go for regression now the logic of response surface goes like this that we start at the beginning with the definition of the limit state and we also define the random variables with their mean and standard deviation and the type of distribution then we generate two end points around the mean point and then at these support points we evaluate the response surface and based on that value we actually fit the response surface once we have the response surface rx is ready then we can adopt level 2 reliability analysis for xd that is the design point that is on the response surface now obviously this blue dot is on the response surface so this is the point what we get once we solve the limit state problem in the new format that is rx equal to 0 using level 2 reliability method now this is not the design point because this is not on the actual limit state and that we can find out just by using lin linear interpolation so we have these three points so mean then xd and xn that is the actual design point on the limit state so that we can do it using linear interpolation and this is the expression so we then find out this linear ex mm, interpolation and then obtain this new design point and at this location again we fit the surface and recheck and after that we again evaluate the reliability index and the design point and then finally we stop we can continue this iteration if you want but normally we have seen from our experience that at least two iterations uh, enough to solve the uh, reliability problem so in that case twice 2n plus 1 plus finally once for the ultimate design point we have to solve so altogether 4n plus 3 number of function calls are necessary for this uh, fitting the response surface now fitting a global response surface is not always recommended the reason is the limit state that we get may have large modeling error and that's the reason we do not prefer to fit a global response surface for the complete domain now there comes moving least square based approach and the moving least square based approach is uh, helpful in the way to map the limit state uh, over the complete domain and there actually this weight function is varied and using this weight function we assign different weights at different locations and thereby we control the local error and that's how we improve the local error so that it can fit in a better way now there are different weight functions available for example linear exponential cubic and regularized out of that we prefer to use this last one regularized because of certain properties uh, we can see the plot of this these uh, weight functions obviously you see when we talk about linear weight function it actually linearly varies over a larger domain that is its domain is defined from 0 to 1 and obviously there are uh, more number of spread uh, of the points and the ordinates if you look at it takes longer time to decay as you move away from this zero position on the other hand if you take say regularized it is very much centralized near about zero that is uh, where the weight function is localized and then as we go away from this uh, location its value drops and then obviously we if we use this we will get a better fit in and around this point where it is localized and depending upon the nature of the problem uh, we have different other versions of the weight functions and in fact uh, in many problems other weight functions have found to give better results for example in some problem cubic weight function is be better in some problems exponential gives a better result but for the time being let us use regularized weight and the expression for this you can see on your screen and it has uh, this delta by r ratio it actually uh, defines the domain of influence using this parameter we can actually control the shape and that's how the domain of uh, influence is controlled and this delta is the euclidean distance from the support points so if the weight function is centered around this zero position obviously as we go away from this uh, central point 
obviously the value of the weight function drops and that means we give maximum weightage at this location and have a better fit in and around in fact uh, we solved one problem where we changed the weight function and showed you that as we increase the weight function at a particular location um, then you get a better fit in and around that location if you refer the previous uh, lectures uh, you can find out that example where we fit a straight line and at y equal to 5 we used once a weight of 10 and then we increase it to 100 and that showed us uh, how the estimation at that y equal to 5 was improved similarly here the weight function actually offers a better fit in and around where it has maximum influence so this radius r uh, dictates the influence over which uh, this weight function acts for a better fitting and then uh, some other parameters are there in this uh, regularized weight function this uh, epsilon which is the regularization parameter normally its value is kept 10 to the power minus 5 but we can also change it if the need be now these functions are shown in logarithmic scale also to show their domain of influence obviously uh, in case of regularized weight function its domain of influence is very narrow compared to other uh, weight functions so that's the reason uh, these weight functions uh, uh, it is found to give satisfactory result in most of the cases as you can see in this uh, example what we have this blue line is the original uh, performance function <coughs> excuse me and that we try to fit with different weights so these green dots are the weights or contributions of support points as we keep on moving along this path and fit this curve so as we move along the path defined by this blue line we get different uh, local approximations and then based on that we fit the curve and we have different weights at different points also the local approximation varies together all of them when we combine we get basically the blue surface that's how this weighted least square acts now obviously when we look at this approximation you can see this red line which is very uh, very much on the blue line where this uh, arbitrary points are shown you can see that this, that bigger red dot that shows the path along which it moves and the green dots are basically the weight function now if you look at uh, say at this point here the fitting is better but if you follow that red line as it moves away from these green points obviously you do not have a good fitting and that's also not necessary because uh, we just need a local fit as it moves on we have different portion of the red line that maps this blue line and that's how the moving least square works so now there are two options we have least square technique so the coefficients in the least square it's constant over the complete domain and therefore we have a global approximation that's the reason many a times we have large modeling error and that's very difficult to manage and that's the reason we have a MLS technique where the coefficients also vary over the domain and because of this variation of the coefficients as we move along the domain then we have different uh, coefficients to model the actual surface and that's the reason we get a better approximation of the original surface in the moving least square technique and that's the reason we also get a better estimation of the reliability index and probability of failure when we use this uh, technique where the coefficient varies as we move over the domain so now next comes the location of the support point now earlier we used mean plus minus k sigma and the support point locations for 2n plus 1 uh, uh, design points earlier we used in case of uh, quadratic uh, polynomials that I showed you earlier but there are other design of experiment in the design of experiment we actually define the location of the support points and at that locations 
we solve the original performance function and thereby we get the approximated value of the coefficients. Now, the first one in the design of experiment, you can see this is the quotient design. It has minimum number of support points. So, these are the points that are used in case of linear as well as quadratic basis. So, these are marked. So, in this uh, quotient design, the DOE has minimum number of support points. If we move further, we have a full factorial design. So, for linear basis, it takes the corner points in XY plane. And then in the quadratic basis, it has one more point at the middle. So, it takes all three points uh, along the X1 and X2 axis. So, that is the full factorial design. It has maximum number of support points. Then we have D optimal. So, in case of D optimal, it is 1.5 times quotient design. And in this case, we minimize this X transpose X. Uh, here you can see the location of this. In case of linear and quadratic, uh, it for the time being it matches, but if you go for higher uh, number of uh, random variables, then we see the difference. For the time being, see this D optimal points and the previous one, they are exactly same. Then we have central composite design. Central composite actually uses central point plus axial point and box corner points and that is how these design points are differed in dif different DOE schemes. Nevertheless, the main issue is we should have at least the same number of unknowns that many support points or otherwise we can have more number of support points. So, in case we have exactly same number of uh, support points as many un unknown coefficients we have in the original model then we can exactly solve them through matrix inversion or otherwise we have to go for um, optimization of the error. But it is always better to have more number of support points uh, in and around the design point so that we get a better approximation locally in and around the point that we pay maximum attention. In our case, in, in reliability problems, MPP is the point of uh, interest. So, in and around MPP, if we have more points, then we can map the surface more accurately. Now, the logic of the moving uh, least square based response surface goes like this. So, we first define a search domain and then define the center central point, then generate support points in and around X star using a DOE scheme, a suitable DOE scheme then evaluate fx at those support points, then construct the response surface at this level we basically evaluate the unknown coefficients and based on that we fit the surface. Then we determine the coefficient based on the weights. We have the option for different weight functions in the MLS based techniques. Then finally once we have the surface ready, the response surface is further used to evaluate the optimal point x star. Then we check for convergence. If not, then we, I mean, reduce the search domain according to the new design point and then reiterate the procedure. And then in and around that new design point, we again generate the support points using the same DOE scheme and repeat the procedure until and unless the convergence is achieved. Now, once the convergence is achieved, we get the optimized design point and that is what we look for in the reliability based design. So, this is uh, one example again the same problem we have solved the same cantilever beam using now moving least square based approach. Now, first what we do we uh, generate the support points you can see we have large number of support points here but before that we first uh, fix the response surface. And on top of that response surface, we have two options. So, MLS based RSM is solved by form and by MCS. So, these are the MCS points on top of response surface. Once we map the original response surface, this is a quadratic response surface. So, a quadratic polynomial is uh, sufficient. Again, in this case, we used regularized weight and uh, you can see a green dot here. This is the point of MPP and below that 
the, these red dots are the points where we have failure domain and all these blue dots are showing the safe domain. So, using this uh, we have solved this uh, beta reliability index and the probability of failure. Now, if we compare the results, if you can recall the original value of the reliability index for this problem where mean of Fy is 38 KSI and sigma of Fy is 3.8 KSI and Z that is the section modulus has mean 54 inch cube and sigma Z is 5.0 inch cube. In that case, Hassofer Lind reliability index is 3.6012 and the corresponding probability of failure is 0 0.00015. Then, if you repeat the same exercise using MLS based RSM, the form gives exactly same results 3.6012 and obviously the PF is also the same. Now, when we do the Monte Carlo simulation on top of the response surface generated, obviously in the simulation we have certain level of error, but even then the result is very accurate. So, it is 3.6153 and uh, there is not much uh, impact on the uh, PF sorry there will be a dot here so it is 0 0.00015 now that's the case of a linear limit state uh, and then let us go for a different function so we have a franks function in this case again the expression for this franks function you can see here so here is the function this function is used to test numerical codes this is a hypothetical limit state and in this case, you can see the red line that shows the limit state where this surface meets the zero line. So, this is the line where this surface crosses zero marks. So, that's our limit state and the mean uh, MPP will be somewhere here. This surface is also used to test other uh, algorithms just because it has two local maxima with a single global minimum. So, this uh, algorithm is uh, used for uh, model validation. In our case, we will use this for uh, reliability estimation. So, the limit state is marked by red line and it is two dimensional x1 and x2, both of them are normal with zero mean and unit standard deviation. Then, uh, we first uh, generate the surface using moving least square. I will show you the code in a minute how the surface looks like once we uh, develop the surface using moving least square. Then on top of that, we perform the uh, reliability analysis and for that we use Monte Carlo simulation. So, you simulate samples and plot the histogram. This zero line actually marks the safe and failure region. Obviously, the region on the left hand side is, shows failure and the result is here. So, from first order reliability analysis, we get a beta of 1.6893 and corresponding PF is 0 0.04558. Then we fit the surface and on top of this surface, we use two different techniques. First order reliability method on the MLS based RSM. Then we get a beta of 2.0733 and the corresponding probability of failure is 0 0.01907. And then when we conduct the Monte Carlo simulation on this surface, we get a beta of 1.9914 and the corresponding PF is 0 0.02322. Obviously, there is still some amount of error left. As we progress in this course, we will use the same function and we will see how we can improve these results. But for the time being, you can see this uh, line demarcating actually the safe and failure region. So, anything below shows the red dots, that is the region where we have failure surface and the blue dots represent the safe region. Here also we have MPP that is not visible. Once we run this code in a minute in MATLAB, I will show you this MPP. It will be somewhere here corresponding to this point here. Now, let us now see how we can develop a MLS based code and the algorithm that we uh, discussed earlier, how to implement that in MATLAB. So, 
let me just keep this equation open and then I will show you the MATLAB code. So, here is the expression for moving least square based approximation and the weight function is here. So, here you can see the main file. I will come to this part in a minute. So, we have a function file RSM that is response surface using moving least square and here actually we solve this uh, problem. This function file is called from a main file where we have different case numbers for different problems. So, we are using this case number 18 for Frank's function. So, we have a limit state function also where different limit states are defined and then here the case where we have defined the Frank's function. So, that is the equation for the limit state here in this case and uh, this, this problem uh, was taken from a reference. You can also see the paper from where it was taken. So, you can refer to that also for the details of this uh, test function. So, this is the limit state. Now, going back to the main file, we define the properties. In this case, we change the mean and sigma uh, and this 2, 2 actually correspond to the normal distribution. So, we have equivalent normalization and here you can see the ID2 corresponds to the normal distribution. This uh, function file we discussed earlier during uh, our first order reliability analysis and this function file we use for equivalent linearization. Now, coming back to the main file, again, once these properties are defined, then we have different DOE schemes and here we have different options. We can go for axial, D-optimal, CCD. So, we prefer CCD because we have all possible combinations of points here. And then we have two options, either we can go for least square analysis or moving least square analysis. And in the moving least square analysis, if we set a special case, where all the weight functions are 1, I can show you here at the bottom we have the weight functions. So, here you see weight matrix. So, we have case 1 for regularized weight functions, then exponential weight functions and when we have all weights are 1, we get back the original least square approximation. So, here we set this ID corresponding to least square or moving least square. So, this ID 2 means moving least square and that is what is set here. And then once we set this ID, we go to the main file here at the beginning. Again, this part is same what we earlier developed. So, here we have this matrix. First, it is uncorrelated. So, the random variables are uncorrelated. For that, we use the covariance matrix and using that, we decouple. So, from X space, we convert it into Y space and find out the properties in Y space. Then, we generate X s that is the design point in and around uh, that reference point. So, we design of experiment is conducted here. So, for that, there is a function file again at the bottom. Here is the design of experiment and again there are different options axial, d-optimal and CCD because we are in CCD we generate the design points here and once the design points are generated then we go back to that, that part again. Then at this point, once the DOEs are generated, then we call the limit state to solve the limit state function to find out its value at these support points. And just by changing this example ID, we can solve different problems. So, in this case, we will solve the Frank's function. Then uh, comes Rackwitz algorithm. It is straightforward. So, we first develop this 
a y and b y matrix that's how we convert from x to y and then uh, in the y space then finally we use this conversion to go to the z space and in between if we need to convert to equivalent normal then we have this code which was earlier discussed so using this code we get the equivalent normal property and then using that property we solve now at this point we get the gz that is the limit state in the z space where we use mls technique so using mls based approximation we get the coefficient so that coefficient mls there is a function file where exactly the analysis is done Here is the function file coefficient MLS. Here actually the moving least square based regression is carried out. For that again, first the basis vectors are formed and then using this expression on your screen, we obtain the coefficients. So, here is the line where actually we get this expression and then we get the coefficient. Once the coefficients are found out, then multiply that with the basis vector to form the response surface. So, that is how the response surface is created and then once that is done, it is further continued and we get the derivative of the limit surface in the z space and then once we do that, we can find out z nu. Here we apply Newton Raphson based algorithm and then from the initial guess of the design point that is z initial we directly get the z nu and at this new design point we find out <laughs> beta and then we check the convergence as usual then finally once we get the design point we go for interpolation because the point we find out this xd that is the design point is over the response surface and not on the original limit state that we get just by linear interpolation and then finally we check convergence and if it is converged we break this iteration or otherwise repeat the same procedure now that's how the moving least square based uh, approximation is carried out for response surface generation and once that is done we can go for monte carlo simulation also to cross verify the result it's very simple we generate the sample points and then using these sample points then again we solve this uh, problem identify whether this point is in the safe domain or failure domain and then we calculate the pfmcs based on the number of failure cases we have so here is basically the indicator function so if we sum it up then we get the number of failures divided by the total number of simulations that gives us the number of um, failures and that's how we calculate the probability of failure once we estimate the probability of failure we get the corresponding beta and that completes the exercise so we get the reliability problem solved using moving least square based response surface approximation so let us demonstrate if we solve this number 18 problem that is the expression for Frank's function. So, if we run it, it will take little time to fit those surface and then once it is done, yes, so the solution is ready. So, we get beta form, you can see 2.0733 and then one beta MCS we get 1.9788 corresponding design point we also have and here you can see the surface so 
on the limit state gx then based on the samples generated we find out the value of gx and then based on that value we plot the histogram and you can see the zero position and the number of failure cases on the left hand side of this zero position then this plot shows the shows the monte carlo simulation results so we have the safe and failure cases clearly marked and if we turn it the other side you can see this green dot here that's the location of the design point so that is the mpp shown here and that is in the plan view it is uh, clearly visible so if you see this plan view of the same 3d plot here is the line that demarcates the safe and failure region and that's the limit state and on this side we have the all failure cases and this green dot is basically the most probable failure in the xy domain and if you look at the surface so the original surface is marked by this red uh, net and then if we see that this is the least square approximation using uh, a weight function so regularized weight we have used and these are the locations of the support point because we have used ccd scheme if you recall this is the location where we actually set our initial positions and in and around that we generate the support points using ccd scheme and in that location uh, because we have failure somewhere here in that location we have a good match and as we move away from this point where the weight functions are defined we have uh, not so good match this we can also improve if we just have some extra support points here and as we move over the domain if you take some extra support point over the complete domain we can map the complete surface nevertheless for the time being our interest was to map this region because the failure surface goes like this so over this region we wanted to map this original surface using moving least square and that's how we set our uh, support points in this region and there we have a very good match you can see both of them uh, match perfectly but as we move away from the support points obviously this approximation is not good but as i said we can improve this as we progress in this course we will come back to the same functions and we will see how we can nicely map the complete domain using uh, more points and using orthogonal polynomials however this code and the result shows that in this problem if you use moving surface using moving least square technique a response surface then we can have a better approximation and the estimation of reliability index is also accurate the same problem you can take an exercise and with the help of a quadratic polynomial you can uh, solve this problem and find out the reliability index and you, you compare the result with the results that we obtain using moving least square based response surface so with that uh, uh, our today's lecture ends here so as we progress we will see how we can improve this reliability analysis technique in the next lecture we will combine moving least square with orthogonal polynomials and we will see how we can develop adaptive stochastic response surface or sometimes we also call sequential stochastic uh, response surface and we will solve these problems again to verify the results and how we can improve the quality of the results for this reliability analysis with that let us close our discussion on mls here Thank you very much.